I was talking to a family member and they were kind of, a, they're an older family member. Like, you know, when I was your age, we used to build things that you could hold at the end of the day. I'm like, I'm, we're still building really cool, helpful things. Welcome to a roundup of the DBT Slack channel in video form. Let's go. Analytics engineering was not a job title more than just a few short years ago. So I caught up with two community members, Tom Nagengast in California and Adam Stone in the UK, who was joined by his fantastic translator, Mindy. Both were recently hired onto Netlify's data team as analytics engineers. So I was really curious to find out, how's it going? So Adam, how would you describe the job of analytics engineer to a friend? How would you describe what you do? It's a lot like being a data librarian. So if you are running a library, you have to, you, you have these books coming in and you have people who are looking for books on specific topics. And you've got to figure out a way to organize all those books so that all those people can find what they need. And there are many different ways to organize books. There's not just one perfect solution. So I think that a librarian is interested in helping people find the books that they're looking for, but also discovering new books that they didn't realize that they were looking for. So Tom, I know you were a data scientist, right, in your last role at MindBody. I'm curious how you found this analytics engineering job and what made you interested in it? I was in the, the DBT Slack and I saw that Emily had been, she posted an opening for an analytics engineer. And at first I was like, what's a, what's an analytics engineer? And I started looking, you know, reading, I think there's a, there's a blog, there's a bunch of blog posts now, but there are a few back there that I read. I'm like, this is all the stuff that I like about what I do. And I went to look at the, the job posting and I really, it was really cool how they had done the job posting where it's like, you're, they've got the 30, 60, 90 day plan of what you what you're expected to do on the job. I was like, this is so clear. I've never seen, you know, it laid out quite like this. So Adam, what's the one thing you can't live without as an analytics engineer? I've worked in data now for eight or nine years between academia and uh, the tech world. And trust is one thing that you cannot play around with. You have, you have to have a lot of it coming into the situation and you know, it can go away quickly and it's hard to get back. Materialize just released a new adapter for dbt core into beta a couple weeks back and materialize is really interesting and novel because it allows you to basically run postgres queries onto a streaming data set the team at fishtown recently sat down to get up and running with this new materialize adapter and i clipped a couple quotes from drew bannon fishtown's chief product officer about the new potential that streaming materialized views on materialized opens up. Streaming would probably be most appropriate if you're building applications. Maybe some sort of ML recommendation engine. You're on Netflix and based on the shows that you click into and then back out of, you wanted to inform the things that are predicted to you or like shown to you lower down on the Netflix screen as you're scrolling. Well, we're learning that you don't want these things and you do want these things. A sub second pipeline end to end from recording what you're doing, making a prediction, updating the interface, streaming makes sense there. It makes a lot of sense. The second use case Drew mentioned was operational. That is, you want to pass data from one system to another in real time. Imagine you sell mattresses online. If somebody puts something in their cart and then leaves the site for you know five minutes, you should shoot them an email with a discount code on whatever's in their cart. They were right there and they didn't press purchase and you can try to get them to convert. It's like a pretty common strategy for e-commerce companies. If you had to wait like a batch time frame, like an hour to reprocess that data and then fire off the message, the moment might have passed, right? So like materializes, I think going to be pretty good at wiring up this kind of logic to, you know, look at all the customers, look at what's in their cart, look at when they last had their session or when they abandoned their cart and then fire off message to some other system. The cool thing is you start thinking about like sources and sinks. We're excited about this materialized adapter. We hope you are too, and can start thinking through how you might make use of this on your team. Jessica Laughlin from Materialize is in the DB Materialize Slack channel if you have any questions or you wanna get started beta testing. Warning, this is an experiment. If you want me to keep making these and find out whether my office plants live or die, then smash that subscribe button.
Another great show and tell from community member Josh Devlin is a guide that he wrote on using anchors in YAML files. I know I'm guilty of this myself, of really repeating myself when writing tests like unique and not null for a primary key. And if you really want to avoid repeating yourself, highly recommend checking out Josh's blog post on YAML anchors and repeating sections. Are you feeling FOMO that you're not taking full advantage of your DBT project's metadata? A new package, DBT Artifacts, hopefully will change that. It was built by Nal Woodward of Tails.com and Claire Carroll, of course, DBT Community Manager. This allows you to look at any roadblocks or long-running models in your project, identify those. It allows you to look at source freshness over time and see how that's trended. And it allows you to look at test worn or failure rates over time for specific models. Claire wrote up a discourse post that I'm gonna to link to in the show notes. I highly recommend checking out the whole thing. Be curious to know in the comments on that discourse post, What's your kind of killer visualization or use of this metadata? Is there a way that you put these artifacts into operation on your team that really move the needle? We all have our own ways of checking how changes to dbt models make an impact in the data itself. Now you can write your own queries all day and night, but thankfully there is a new tool integrated with dbt cloud via the API that will actually embed this data diff into your CI jobs. It's called Datafold, and the founder, Gleb, is active in DBT Slack. So check them out at datafold.com. As I'm sure you've noticed, there is a new member on the DBT community team. Her name is Jillian Corkin, and she's here right now to share a quick introduction. Hello, DBT community. I'm Jillian Corkin. I've been a member of the community for a few years now, and I just recently joined Fishtown as a developer relations advocate. My favorite Slack channel is operational analytics, because to me, the holy grail of data is being able to empower your business with insights at the speed that it operates. If that sounds like total BS to you, it's also a great channel because Claire Carroll knows how to stir up the conversation with her spicy hot takes. If you don't believe me, just go see for yourself. I'm most excited to get to know more of the DBT community because people who work in data and analytics are the raddest. It, they just are. So please reach out to me in Slack at Jillian and say hi, and let me know if you'd be open for an introductory meeting. That's all for this edition. If you see something in Slack that you think should be in the next edition, make sure to drop a plus sign, a heavy plus sign emoji on it, and we'll make sure to include it here. Take care.